Welcome to worship and welcome to guests and visitors. We are so glad that you are here. Debbie just asked if he could share an announcement. So, yes, I just wanted to announce that so we we, hold that up, honey. we need we need uh, volunteers for mowing the church lawn. We we have no no one on the list from now through the summer. And if you haven't done it before, uh, I would be happy to come in and work with you on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, yes. And uh, on that note, we have the August service sign-up um, in the narthex. And I know that everybody is busy, so I'm going to talk a lot about that in my sermon. And I know that everybody has a lot to do, and it's hard to commit. But if you could just take a moment and um, find some time to help out, that would be great. And so the sign-up for mowing is in the back, directly across from here. There's a bulletin board that has our missionary. The sign-up for mowing is there, and then the uh, sign-up for the other ways that you can serve is in the narthex as well. So thank you in advance to you for, for your help. Um, as I said, welcome to announce or welcome to uh, guests and visitors. Um, Declan Roberts' family is here as he will receive the sacrament of holy baptism, and it's going to be an incredible, wonderful, and special time. We're ready. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Tissue, yeah, how big, yeah, you got a few? All right, good deal. <laughs> She's got more, she's going to be set. <laughs> so that will be happening a little bit later in our service. And uh, Lori Pock is going to be sharing her gift of music with us. Um, and the song that she's singing is really, really cool because Lori used to be Christine's uh, music teacher. And the first time that Christine sang in church, she was a little nervous. And uh, so Lori uh, helped Christine through that. And the song that is going to be sung today uh, Christine sang it at Maddie's baptism. So it's really, really cool. So we're going to move that song closer to the baptism so it will be happening during the offertory. So as we move over what's listed in the special music part, we haven't forgotten it. We've, we've just made a change. So welcome to Declan's family and uh, welcome to everybody else as well. We want to keep in our prayers all of our folks at the National Youth Gathering. Today is their last day of the gathering. They are going to, oh, they probably are in worship right now, led by uh, the ELCA Bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. And so we want to continue to keep those folks in our prayers as the 30,000 are then departing from Detroit. Keep them in our prayers for safe travels and for all of the growth that they've had will continue to be shared and lived out here and among us in Detroit Lakes. We're also sending a group of eight of us tomorrow to head out to Summer Festival, which is a junior high camp, um, and it will be held at Stout uh, in Menominee. So we want to pray. I'll be leading that group. And so we've got um, pastoral coverage. If there's an emergency, call Terry Bichetti in the church office, and we will make sure that your needs are taken care of. Um, and then we've got two headed to Pathways. Uh, Bryson, you're going? Pathways, you head out today, and McKenna Stein is, is uh, going to camp as well. So big camp weeks, and it's been fantastic to hear all of you who have attended Emmaus and served as a counselor at Emmaus. So camping is just such an incredible time. So thank you for your support of those ministries. Um, as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, all who believe in the true presence of Christ and the wine and wafers are welcome to come forward and receive. If you'd like to receive, open your hand. We'll give you a wafer, and then you can uh, dip that into our split chalice, then consume it and head back to your seat for silent reflection and meditation. We have gluten-free, and if mobility is a concern, stay put. Where is Pete Granger? Where is Pete? There you are. Pete had hip surgery, and he's doing quite well. Uh, so, but you stay put if you need to, and anybody else for that matter. I'm sorry, I just broke the cardinal Lutheran rule. You don't actually talk to anybody in the pews. So, <laughs> sorry, Pete. So, yes, please stay put. Are there any other announcements that should be shared? Okay, with that, I invite you to please stand as you are able as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator, the bread of life, the power at work within us. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us take a moment of silence and confess our sin.
God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned and thought we have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away. Because of Christ's forgiveness, you are made new. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn number 7, 8, 9. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace in our hearts. 
to guide that you sent to our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the Join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. First lesson today is taken from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I've driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety, in safety. And this is the name by which he shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Be Second reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please stand as you are able. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and, and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him 
that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated and all of the little shavers to come on up. All of our little, come on, I have paper. I know you don't have Miss Laura or Miss Susie, you got to deal with me. <laughs> I'm going to need some help. Come on up. Welcome. Have a seat for now. It's a little wet there. Okay. Oop, hi. Sorry. Okay, don't sit in the water. How are you guys? Are you good? So Jesus invites his disciples to come and rest. For a while, and I want us to kind of play a little game. Now, you may know this game is a different name or by a different way, but back in the day when I was young and little, um, we called it red light, green light. And what we did is we all lined up in one area, and the person who was kind of leading the game stood kind of a distance away, and they would say, Green light and you would move towards them, and every once in a while they would stop and say, red light, green light, red light, and you didn't know when the red and green light was gonna go. Have you heard this game before? Is, do you still kind of play it that way? Yeah? Okay, good. I remember one time I tried to teach a song and I was just way off, so glad we're on the same page here. So we're going to kind of play that game, but since we're in the sanctuary, um, we are just going to walk, and it's not a race. So I want you to be careful for some of the smaller people. But I want you to listen for the green light. And on green light, I want you to move and walk towards me. And when I say red light, I want you to stop. OK? Is that, can we do that? All right. So we'll have you guys start over here. OK? Kind of line up over here. If you'd like to join us, you can. Do we have anybody else? Go ahead and start over here. And I know that you won't all fit through, so you'll just kind of have to. Ready? Okay. So we'll come together as a group. All right. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. Okay. We'll wait for everybody. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Good deal. Yeah, nice job. Welcome. You made it. So in our lives, <clears throat> we live at kind of a green light pace. We go, 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 go. And we have times in our life when we're invited to red light, stop, but we don't always. What happens when we go, 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 and never stop? You get tired. You become a little cranky. Mom? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you not want to play as nicely with your brothers and sisters or share? No, no, you don't. So there's times when we need to stop. And when we pray or do our devotions or come to worship or eat a family meal together or a meal with friends that we care about, those are times that we stop and get recharged, okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes in the regular sermon, but would you please pray with me and repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for times to rest. Let us take those times to be fed and loved by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good. Thank you very, very much. All right, you got everything there? Oh, yeah. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Hospitality, power, compassion. Chapter 6 of the Gospel of Mark manages to cover some pretty significant components of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We're reminded today in this chapter 6 of the importance of rest. We need to rest so that we do not become complacent. Rest. 
a break from all of the bustle and activity. Rest, a time to renew, to stop, to slow. An end to work, even if only for a little while. Rest, an opportunity to stop doing so that you can simply be. Rest. For some people, the very idea of rest is enough to grip their entire being. However, if we do not take time to rest, sometimes we forget how to do it or why it's important to do. A few years ago, the Boston Globe reported on a study conducted through UCLA. The study observed that the typical work week of 32 middle-class families in the Los Angeles area was pretty intense. The idea for the study was that the researchers wanted to take a detailed snapshot of American family life in the 21st century. The results, according to one researcher, were disheartening. So consumed with working and collecting and amassing and generally trying to get ahead that people actually spent very little time together enjoying what they were working for. It was reported that close to 50 of the 64 parents in the study said that they never even stepped outside in the course of a week. They would give tours of their house and they would say, well, there's the backyard, but I just don't have time to go there. They worked out of their homes Leisure time was spent in front of the TV or the computer. In other words, most of these families didn't take time to rest. And if that is a snapshot of our lives today, few of us take time to rest. Jesus invites his first disciples, and he invites us to come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. Now, this isn't just an invitation to take an afternoon off or go on vacation. Yes, those are important elements, but this is an invitation to loosen the shackles and climb out of the cages we have constructed from this culturally fed belief that more is the ticket to happiness and work is the ticket to more. I know how many of you are busy person after person who entered into this building this morning, I asked how you were, and you said, I'm tired. If you didn't say it, you sure looked it. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so I wonder how many of you take time to rest, to really rest. Do you take time to rest between tea times and having grandchildren over or getting ready to go on trips to care for those grandchildren or fishing commitments or vacation with family or friends or errands like going to the bank, getting groceries, getting gas for the mower or the boat or dinner gatherings. You've got to make sure that you have all of the food. You have gardens. You have doctor appointments. You chauffeur your children around and you have all the social commitments that you are part of. You work out. You have coffee with friends or you visit your mother. Do you ever take time to breathe, to rest. It is a hard thing to do these days. No wonder the psalmist says, quite honestly, that the Lord didn't simply invite rest, but the psalmist instead confesses that the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. We are a people that desperately need rest. And yet, so often, we resist it. But I fear that when we don't rest, we become cynical and jaded, and we no longer care for one another. We become complacent. 3M sales associate Mark Uller reported to The Onion back in early June that he honestly thought his ongoing breakdown would be more obvious to the people around him. 
He explained that he had assumed the deterioration of his physical and psychological state would be readily apparent, more obvious to anyone around him. He said, given how many times I had showed up to work with just one or two hours of sleep and just stared at my computer in total silence, I kind of expected that somebody would ask me if I was okay. So far, I haven't heard a thing. He added, for all of the times that he had put his face into his hand or just kind of walked around muttering to himself, he thought that that would be a clear indication that he was completely unraveling, and that would prompt somebody to stop by his cubicle. He said, you know, I was sure that the HR manager, when she asked me to stop by to see her last week, would discuss why I look like I'm on the verge of tears at every meeting. But it turns out she just wanted to explain changes in our 401k plan. Uller told the press, I feel like my entire life is collapsing and I can barely stay afloat. But every time I get an email from coworkers, it's just about jumping on a client or finishing up my monthly report. The article concludes that when Uller's colleagues were asked to comment, they said, oh yeah, we noticed his breakdown weeks ago, but we simply didn't care. That's just sad. That's complacent. And that's what happens when we are too busy, even with really great stuff in life, when we are constantly going and refuse to listen to Jesus' invitation to come away and rest. So here's your homework. I want you to think about how you will rest this week. Truly rest. Will it be that you leave the office on time to go home and be with your friends and family? Will you turn off the TV or your cell phone during dinner and leave it off until morning? Will you take time to hold on to your children or chase them around? Because they will grow up way too fast. Will you take time to walk with your spouse? Because we never know when they'll be called home. Will you sit down and read the Bible? You know, that book that's on your bucket list? Will you finally get to know this God who loves you enough that he died for you to forgive you and give you abundant life? Will you not cram your calendar so completely full this week that you will leave a little room for the Holy Spirit to blow? Because if you're not constantly on the go, you might see you're at work. Will you rest? So I'm wondering, do you have something in mind? Do you have a way that you can rest? Write it down. Pull out your bulletins right now. I mean it. Accountability here. This is how it's going to happen. Okay, this is the point where you pull out the bulletins. Grab a pencil. They're located in the pews in front of you. In the corner, write how you will rest. And then here's the deal. I want you to rip it off and then put it in the offering plate. Do you guys know that I pray for you throughout the week? I care for you deeply. And this will be how I can pray for you this week to help you seek the rest, the rest from the water problem, the rest from the busyness of family and friends. Not all of you are moving. I'm serious. (laughs) Pull it out. Rest. One way that you will challenge yourself. One way that I can pray for you. Now, don't put your bulletin away because on the other side, you need to write it down for yourself and take it home and let it serve as a reminder of one way that you will rest. Oh, some of you are fighting me on this. This isn't 
just a thing that I want. It's a thing that God wants for you. Listen to Jesus' invitation to come away and rest. Indulge yourself with the gift that God gives to you. Slow down. Rest. And recognize the blessings on the journey. They are many. And for now, our journey continues. Amen. Go ahead and keep finishing up your writing. And we continue with our hymn of the day. Jesus is a rock. Anne has asked me to help you sing the verses of this song, so if you will join me on the verses, I will try and help you. And the refrain, refrain and verses. Jesus is a rock in a way. Okay, if I just keep holding it, because he's pretty good. No. Oh, okay, or not. That's okay. That's okay. You good? <laughs> yeah, Mom. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll transfer over just for a minute. I'm going to get my book situated. Okay. If you'd like to follow along, the service is on page 227 in the front of the hymnal. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So mom and dad, called it by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son baptized into Christ? If so, please respond, I do. 
As you bring Declan to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scripture, to nurture him in faith and prayer so that your son may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. You promise to help your son grow in the Christian faith and life. If so, mom and dad, please respond. I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, gentlemen, please respond. I do. People of God, do you promise to support Declan Roberts and pray for his new life in Christ? If so, please respond, we do. I ask you, parents and sponsors, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, parents and sponsors, please respond, I renounce him. And together, let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please pray with me? We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that all who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Roberts, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, and cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Sustain Declan Roberts, the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Declan Roberts, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Today is his re-birthday. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. There we go. Yes. And so on this day, we recognize it as the day that he is welcomed into God's kingdom in a new way. Declan, there is nothing that you can do to make God love you any more than he already does. He has died for you, dear one. And so live your life in thankful response to that gift of life that you have been given. And let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works 
to glorify your Father in heaven. Now, as I said a couple weeks ago, the baptism, the next part is the commissioning, and it is something that we should hear in all of, as a recommissioning for all of us. And so, dear Declan, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. And so I invite you to applaud and give us thanks in joint, uh, giving thanks and praise to God in bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all of the world. Welcome to the family, dear Declan. promises to place in your hands the Holy Scripture, and so we give promises to uh, help equip you in that journey as well, and so those are for you. Oh, goodness! You're squeaky. Here, I'll give you that, too. And so, uh, what should we do next? Let's pray. Yeah, you may return to your seats. Congratulations. I invite Miss Julie to come forward. The congregation, please stand as you are able as we continue with our prayers of intercession. Gathered by the Holy Spirit and fed by the word, we come together as the people of God to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, Give hope to your church around the world and nurture it with a shepherd's care so that all will remember your faithfulness and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give rest to those who care for others in homes, hospitals, long-term care faci facilities, and hospice. Be with those who are dying, comfort those who grieve, and heal those who are sick. <clears throat> especially Laura Morlock and family on the death of her grandfather last week, the Summerfest participants, members with medical concerns such as J.Q. Calderon, D.J. Hiskin, Colleen Knoop, Michaela Morris, Beth McCauley, Deb Newman, Diane Hazley, and service-connected personnel serving this country. Hear us, O God. Again, we lift up by name our National Youth Gathering participants, our Pathway Campers, and our Summerfest participants. We pray for Bryson, Casey, Brandon, McKenna, Gracie, Lydia, Bria, Peyton, Emily, Grace, Katie, Van, Madison, Devin, Corey, Spencer, Kelly, Emily, Kyra, Jenny, Susie. We also pray that you will bless and empower dear Declan Robert. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are hungry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into our hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord be with you all and also with you. Let us share that gift of peace with one another. You may be seated, and we will now receive our offering and invite Lori to come forward. Beside your cradle, your face. 
that nose looks just like me. I stare in awe and wonder at such a mystery. How God can touch the love of a man and wife and blossom it into the breath of life. Just look at this life. Our eyes are filled with wonder we want so much for you but we might fail you often before your life is through only your heavenly father can hear Just a memory, your Lord will still be there. So on our knees, we pray this cradle song that you'll always know the Lord will keep you strong. We want you to understand the rest in his loving hands for you The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
You may remain seated for just a moment. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you in his love, grace, mercy, and truth now and forever. Amen. I'd like to take just a moment and invite our summer festival participants to come forward. I think Gracie Bellwear is the, the one. Come on up, girlfriend. Um, we're commissioning the kids to this camp because it's a new opportunity. As we, uh, I don't know if you know, but we're in a three-year cycle um, at Trinity. One year we really promote, oh, here you are, Lydia. Hi, dear. One year we really promote mission trips. One year we promote um, regular camps, so to speak. And one year we have kind of a high adventure trip. We do this for our middle schoolers and our senior high kids. Um, this year is kind of the high adventure trip, and so... Um, Susie always accompanies the senior high students. I accompany the middle school uh, kids. It gives them a chance to see that I'm not just a stuffy old pastor who teaches confirmation, um, but I can have fun too. And so that's the importance of going to camp as well. And so uh, we promote camp to Emmaus all the time, uh, but again, those are the kind of the, the three-year cycle. And so this year we're going to a new camp for our middle schoolers, summer festivals, uh, and it's an all-girls trip, so please pray for us. <laughs> oh, it is going to be a great time. And we try to post pictures on, on Trinity's Facebook page. So if you like to see what's going on, um, just uh, call Terry Bichetti in the office, and she can help set you up with that. And so, um, friends, in Christ today we give thanks to God and seek God's blessing as we send uh, the entire group to Summer Festival in Menominee, Wisconsin. Would you please pray with me? Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory, and all creation praises you. We lift our voice to join the song of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Bless all who are sent out from here to attend Summer Festival. Prosper the work of their hands. Let them be open to receiving your gifts as you inspire them and ignite their passion to love and serve you. May the gifts that they use and share be signs of your love to all people. Amen. And so, again, we ask that you continue to keep this group, um, our Emmaus campers and our National Youth Gathering, in prayer. And so, to show your support, we invite you to come. So, we'll meet with you guys in just a few minutes, okay? All right, you may be seated. Please stand as you are able and receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Uh, the hymn number is 674. So if you're using the hymnal, it's wrong from what's printed in the bulletin. But it's hymn number 674. Otherwise, it will be projected on the screen.
are God's people, called to grow in faith and action. Thank you. 